Hello everyone and welcome to video number three. We are still in Unit 7, the classification of living things. The goal for this unit is to understand how living things are sorted into groups based on shared characteristics. So before we get started, what is a characteristic? This could mean so many different things, but think about yourself for a minute. Do you have brown hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, tall, short? These are all examples of characteristics, and this can apply to all living things. This is what helps biologists classify all the different types of species on planet Earth. So in this video, we're going to be exploring the diversity of living organisms. Diversity just means they are different. So in this video, we're going to analyze and describe how and why organisms are classified according to their shared characteristics. And we're going to go back to that Linnaean taxonomy combined with the concept of domains and kingdoms. We're going to explore the three domains and six kingdoms that Carl Linnaeus focused on for his science of taxonomy. Remember, Taxonomy is the science of naming and grouping organisms, and it's the same system we use today. So in the last video, we talked about the history of taxonomy and why it's important. Taxonomy really helps scientists to organize the life forms on planet Earth. Because of taxonomy, scientists are able to come up with the binomial nomenclature of every species on Earth. Binomial nomenclature just means the scientific name. Binomial nomenclature is a Latin term that means two names. For example, the scientific name of humans is Homo sapiens. Taxonomy has allowed scientists to create binomial nomenclature, dichotomous keys, and cladograms. These are all tools that biologists use to help organize all the different types of life forms on Earth. These tools allow scientists to understand a species better and also understand the relationship that it has to other species. Scientists typically examine the physical and chemical characteristics of a species to help identify the relationships among different living things. You will need to understand how to use dichotomous keys and cladograms so you can properly classify living things, just like a biologist. So let's get into the three domains and six kingdoms of life. Scientists divide all living organisms into three very large groups called domains. The first domain is called Archaea, and these are very strange organisms that are microscopic. These organisms do not have a nucleus. The next domain is the bacteria. These are living organisms that also do not have a nucleus. Do you remember what type of cells bacteria have? Pro rhymes with no. And the last domain is called Eukarya. Eukarya is the largest domain and it has four kingdoms, including the Plantae, Animalia, Fungi, and Protista. This domain includes the living organisms with a nucleus in their cells. On planet Earth, 89% of living things are Eukarya, 7% are bacteria, and only 4% are the archaea. There are six recognized kingdoms in the classification of living things. The first one is Kingdom Archaea. The second one is Kingdom Bacteria. The third is Kingdom Protista. Number four is Fungi. Number five is Plantae, and number six is Animalia. 
all living things fit into one of these six kingdoms and one of these three domains. Carl Linnaeus took this a step further when he developed his classification hierarchy. This hierarchy starts with the kingdom. The kingdom is the highest level, so it's the most general. As we go through all of these levels, the living things become more similar. So again, the first level is the kingdom. The second level is the phylum. The third is the class. Fourth is the order. Fifth is the family. Sixth is the genus. And seventh and last is the species. Binomial nomenclature uses the last two levels to come up with a scientific name. Again, as an example, the scientific name for human beings is Homo sapiens. Homo is the genus, which is Latin for man, and sapiens is the species, Latin for wise. So if you translate the Latin scientific name of humans, it means the wise man. A way that you can remember these seven levels is King Philip came over for good soup. This is the one that I like to use. I hope this video helps you understand the three domains of life, the six kingdoms of life, and the seven levels of classification hierarchy by Carl Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with another video next time.